Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mackenzie Brown, and I am project manager with Indigenous Tourism Alberta. And happy National Indigenous Peoples Day. We're really excited because we put out a call to our members across the province to send us in a little video of either their culture, how they celebrate National Indigenous Peoples Day, or just just a story that they wanted to share and we put it all together and we're going to play this awesome video for you so that even though we don't have very many in-person events going on during this day that we're still able to celebrate National Indigenous Peoples Day across the province. Before we get started with our virtual celebration we have an address from our executive director Shay Bird so we'll pass it over to Shay right now. Danse, Uki, Danashi and hello. Indigenous Tourism Alberta acknowledges that we are on traditional territories in Alberta, home to many First Nations, Métis and Inuit who have called these territories home for time and memorial. We acknowledge with respect the traditional territories of Trees 6, 7, 8, 4 and 10 and the diverse histories and cultures of all Indigenous peoples of the province. Indigenous Tourism Alberta was created to enhance the economic viability further engage and support our Indigenous peoples and nurture these partnerships throughout the province by sharing our stories, culture and experiences with the global audience. From our team at Indigenous Tourism Alberta, we wish you a happy National Indigenous Peoples Day. Thanks Shay. We will be hearing from various operators who own and operate different Indigenous tourism experiences. We have so many amazing and diverse Indigenous tourism experiences across Alberta, so let's get started on our virtual tour. First up, we're going south to Treaty 7 territory. Hi, I'm Amy from Moonstone Creation Native Gallery and Gift Shop, and we are a family-based business. It grew from my mom's home-based business, and my cousin Kim works here, and my son is also a part of it. But today, I want to showcase we have an extended family here at Moonstone Creation, and that's all the artists that we represent. We represent over 60 Native artists from across Canada, and today I want to share them with you. The first thing I want to show you is this incredible raven mask by our friend Mervyn Child. He's a quagulith artist from Port Hardy, BC. And the great thing about Mervyn, besides being a wonderful person, we didn't know what we were getting when it came. He just said, I'm sending a mask, and this is what arrived. Isn't it beautiful? Amanda Starlight is from Stony Nation, and she does these amazing watercolor paintings. Amanda's husband, Keegan Starlight, is also an artist, and we're so blessed for this husband and wife team to display their art at Moonstone Creation. Another friend of ours, Simone McLeod. She does these amazing paintings that have teaching balance. It's really lucky to carry her work. We also have Pat Bruderer, who is Cree from Manitoba, and these are birch bark bitings. These are teeny tiny teeth marks on birch bark to create this beautiful piece of art. We also have Saskatchewan artist, Michael Lone Child. He creates such wonderful, beautiful work. Rita Drever is Plains Cree from Northern Saskatchewan and she does the most phenomenal beadwork. We carry her fully beaded moccasins. Clinket Elder Philip Gattensby from the Yukon makes these mammoth ivory pendants. They are between 10 and 40,000 years old. Now we have another antler carver, Glenn Simon, and he created these beautiful pieces. Beadwork is wearable art. This moose hide purse is created by Myrna Dixon. The whole family beads. This one is from her niece, Mariah Dixon, and we created it into a beautiful moose hide purse as well. I can't forget my mommy Von Jobin made these two pieces and all of our beaded brooches are made in house by Kim Brothers. This quilled birch bark basket is from Marie Kochia of Fort McPherson. 
These two birch bark baskets are by Florence Drever of Big River, Saskatchewan. And this birch bark basket with moose hair tufting is by Dolly Michawea of Cheddar, Alberta. Thank you for coming on a mini tour of some of our extended family. Hi, hi. Next up, we're heading over to Treaty 6 territory and our first stop will be at the Rocky Mountain House. Horses. Horses are sacred beings, a gift from the Great Spirit. My name is Bear. Together with my wife, Diane, we have owned and operated Wild Horse Ranch for over 20 years. 20 years of Indigenous tourism programming. Programming like wilderness, wellness, healing with horses, horse camps, wellness tourism, sanctuary gardens, learning from the land, on the land, ancient bushcraft and living skills. Come with us for a little tour of Fort Fearless. This is the sunroom, a place where we come together to meet one another and to just relax and be celebrate our heritage, our culture. Sacred eagle feathers. And my owl who keeps an eye on the place for me. This is all part of who we are and what we do here at Wild Horse. This is not just an activity or a program. This is our life. This is who we are. This is what we like to share with our guests. You get a chance to experience what life was like and still is here in our world, in our place, our own gated community, with our friends, our fellow warriors, our horses. We'd like to invite all of you, now that there's a relaunch and we are opening again, to come and experience this with us, share our life, to sit by a campfire, tell the great stories long ago, and experience the peace of Mother Earth and the strength and courage of Father Sky. Come and visit us. Thank you. Now we'll continue over to Edmonton area.
Good afternoon, everybody, and thank you all for joining us here today as we celebrate National Indigenous Peoples Day with this great cultural showcase. EIA is a proud community partner, and we are committed to celebrating indigenous culture through our organization and airport wide as a whole. I'd like to welcome the uh, visiting chiefs and of course uh, thank uh, EIA President Tom Ruth for his kind words of support. Having this event has allowed this organization to provide everybody an opportunity to share our culture, but we also hope to create an awareness and enhance what Native culture is all about. Thank you to everybody who made this event a priority today. Again, I just love seeing so many young people here today and uh, dance with that drum. Hi, hi, kanaskumtunwa. Tanse abwashted. My name is Sissy Thisa Kutneo and I am from Edmonton, Alberta. I am a cultural facilitator, pow dance performer and instructor, crafter and performing artist. Um, so normally I go into various different organizations, community and schools, and I teach all sorts of different cultural skills from crafting to dancing. And um, then some more contemporary things like spoken word, and I also do um, share about Indigenous history issues and other things to create public awareness. Um, I've been doing this for about six years now. Um, I have my own business called, well, as an independent contractor, called Waxe Saba Experiences. And um, I offer all these things under that umbrella. So jingle, old style, got your hands on your hips, or holding a cooking scarf in one hand. I like to wrap it around my hand because again, we don't want it touching the ground. So I'm going to show you a basic step. So with jingle, um, So we're really taking like a dance, like a walking, but we're putting just a little bit of rhythm to it. So I'll show it to you from the side. So basic step in jingle looks like. <laughs> yeah, got a little messy at the end there, but um, yeah, jingle basic step. If you don't know how to do it, start the march little march step and then you add a jump to it and then it's jumping jump stepping essentially we'll do four of those one two three four um each niche I hi, I wish you all happy trails, good medicine, and I encourage you to keep dancing. Danzy Canada, my name is Keith Diakyu and I'm the owner operator of Talking Rock Tours, which is based out of Edmonton, Alberta. By trade, I'm a professional geologist, but more importantly, I'm a proud Métis Canadian who's from the St. Laurent Patoche region of Saskatchewan. And today, in the spirit of National Indigenous Peoples Day, I'm with my good friend Todd Brown, who's going to showcase an uncommon skill set to pay homage to our ancestors who lived on the Great Plains and conducted the sacred buffalo hunt. So, 
Todd's going to show us the two major techniques, which is percussion flaking followed by pressure flaking. So percussion flaking is basically taking a, a stone like this and knocking a piece off that we call a flake that will be usable in making a, uh, an arrowhead or a, or a uh, spear point. So wish me luck. There we go. There we go. That's a piece that would make a wonderful big spear point. So put that down there and I am going to show you real quick. I've got a I've got a little piece here that I started a little bit ago and I'm going to do a little bit of pressure flaking on it just to uh, hopefully make it into a point that would be useful for a spear point or perhaps an atlatl point. Arrow points were usually a little bit smaller, but and now pressure flaking is just using pressure to knock off little pieces, little flakes, to shape it and to sharpen it. So just in a little bit, I've made a uh, nice little point like this. And take a little bit off of here. And there we go. And all we'd have to do basically would be to put a couple notches in it and it would be a really good point for hunting. Now, sometimes you get lucky and a flake comes off that you can turn into a, an arrowhead really fast like this one here. Or if you have more time, you can make a, a bigger spear point like uh, the pendant that Keith is wearing here. So that's that's basically in a nutshell how uh, you would make a make a point to ensure your survival on the Great Plains. Great. Well, thank you very much, Todd. And for everyone out there in virtual land, please enjoy the festivities across this great land on National Indigenous Peoples Day. Marci, take care of yourselves. Be safe. We're heading north, past Edmonton, all the way up to Smoky Lake, Alberta, and then over to Kikino Métis Settlement. Happy Indigenous Peoples Day! I just want to wish everybody out there happy National Indi Indigenous Peoples Day. I'm Tracy from Painted Warriors. We're here at a beautiful Miti Crossing. Had the rare privilege of training their summer staff, so had a great time. Anyways, I want to say happy Indigenous Peoples Day as well. say bonjour and hello. Welcome to Hideaway Adventure Grounds and Family Retreat, located on Kikino Métis Settlement, two hours northeast of Edmonton, Alberta. We offer canvas wall tents accommodations when you're here to experience the great outdoors. We have trails on 160 acres of woodland. We also will be offering unique workshops and experiences this summer, starting in early July. 2020. So be sure that you check out our website at hideawayadventuregrounds.ca. And thank you for joining us on this National Indigenous Peoples Day. Hi, hi. 
We're going to head over west now, where Treaty 6 meets Treaty 8, separated only by the Athabasca River in the heart of Jasper National Park. Hey, Tanse Sinawak. It's Matricia with Warrior Women, and I wanted to say a happy Indigenous Day and play a song for you. I'm here in beautiful Jasper National Park. A lot of my offerings have gone virtual, but this one is uh, for Indigenous Day and our little COVID pandemic time. I'm going to be singing uh, actually a song of the grizzly bear. Well, we just saw two uh, really beautiful Alquista uh, town Mistaya, so the song is for them. Mistaya visits me in my sleep. She brings me messages of strength and hope. And she says, I will see you again. Hello, my name is Joe and uh, welcome to Jasper National Park and uh, happy National Indigenous Peoples Day. I'm a member of the Métis Nation uh, uh, living here in Jasper and the owner of the Jasper Tour Company along with my wife Patty. Hi Patty. Today I want to tell you a little bit about Métis culture. Who are the Métis? Well, basically we're the confluence of two rivers. We're the joining of these two rivers, one being uh, the indigenous cultures of North America, largely the Cree people and two being the European cultures uh, that came here many, many, many moons ago. Uh, largely the French, the English, and the Scots. Uh, what about Métis culture do I want to talk to you about? Uh, I want to tell you about the Métis sash. The sash, of course, is, uh, is probably the one object that most people can identify uh, with Métis culture. Um, so, what about the sash? Well, the sash I guess you could kind of say the Métis sash was to us back during the days of the fur trade uh, somewhat akin to a Swiss army knife. It had a multitude of uses. What kind of uses? Well, 
first of all, they were worn as a belt by the men. Uh, the actual sashes, like this very colorful one that I'm wearing around my waist, uh, were made out of wool and they would be about uh, 3 meters, 12 feet long. They would wrap around the waist uh, multiple times. Uh, what could you do with it? Well, again, as a belt, <clears throat> they were meant to keep your coat closed. Uh, the Métis men wore coats uh, called capotes, made out of uh, Hudson Bay point blankets, like the one that I'm sitting on. Dead of winter, super warm, but not so much so if they were wide open. So, Sash kept the door shut. Not a bad idea, right? Okay. Also, uh, you could use the sash to stick your buffalo knife in the back of it, holding it there. Uh, maybe your tobacco bag was in the other side of it. Uh, yeah, used to hold a lot of things in. Importantly, it was used to hold your guts in. <laughs> that sounds a little bit weird, uh, but it makes sense. Uh, one of the largest causes of death for men uh, back during the fur trade uh, was hernias, believe it or not, right? So you have this thing wrapped tightly around your waist a multitude of times to keep everything in. What are some of the other uses? Uh, well, a tump line. What's a tump line? Uh, imagine this. So you're paddling hard. You got your belt wrapped tight. You're paddling hard. You're paddling up river. Let's say you've paddled for seven hours. Now suddenly you hit the shoreline, but now you've got to make a portage. You gotta cross this body of land to get to that other body of water way over there. How far is way over there? Let's talk Methy Portage, 13 kilometers over there. So first of all, you grunt, you carry the boat, 13 kilometers. Now, you gotta go back and you gotta get your stuff. Tump line, what is a tump line? Uh, well, when you get there, you would take off your belt and you would use it as a tump line, which went around your forehead uh, to carry your goods. The average bale of fur weighed about 90 pounds. Consider this, you're gonna carry two of them, that's 180 pounds, over your forehead. Mm. Do yourself a favor, get somebody else in the room if you're watching this inside the house, get somebody to pull back on your head. Maybe get their feet off the ground and just try and walk across the room with that. Then consider doing it for 13 kilometers. That's a tump line, that's powerful. Oh, I'm glad I don't have to do it. What else? Um, these fringes here. These fringes here could act as an emergency sewing kit. So let's say you're doing that long carry of your goods from one body of water to the next. And as you're going through the bush, oh darn, you rip your pants. Well, you get to your destination and off come one of these fringes and voila, you fixed your pants. Emergency sewing kit, excellent. Maybe back during the buffalo hunt days, uh, you have your, uh, your house is empty. So you got everything in a lock box all your treasures, you take the key and you tie it on to the end of the fringes uh, so that it won't go anywhere and when you get home all your goods are still safe and sound in your lockbox. Very ingenious. What else? Um, a tourniquet. You're on your horse. We're good horsemen. Every now and again, you know what happens. Whoa! Off you go. Bang! Oh my arm! My arm! My arm! Well, guess what? It's alright. Because you have your emergency sling, right? Uh, a tourniquet. Uh-oh, you're bleeding. Got to cut off the bleeding. Very, very handy, very useful. What else? Uh, let's say you've been carrying again. 13 hours you were carrying. I might be exaggerating, but 13 hours you're carrying. <sighs> you get to the other end. Hoo-wee! You are rich. So, boom! Into the river you go. Uh, la, 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 la. You got a washcloth. You got a towel to dry yourself off. Horses need saddle blankets. You got a saddle blanket. A multitude of uses. Oh, bam, you took down that buffalo. But wait, you gotta go back and get the people. Ah, uh, gee, you want everyone to know that's your buffalo? You take off your sash and you lay it on the buffalo. When anybody comes along, they go, hey, 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 that's Joe's Pasquamoshtosh. That's buffalo in Northern Machif. How do they know? Your sash is there. Do you see these uh, lovely uh, in 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 intricate designs? Back in the day, and this may have been the Scottish influence on the culture, just like the Scots and their family tartan, a lot of the Métis families had their own sash pattern. So yes, somebody would ride up and see that sitting on the buffalo and go, that's Joe's buffalo. We better leave it for him. The sash, the Swiss army knife of the Métis people. The Métis army knife, we'll call it. The Métis knife, simple. Anyway, thanks for listening to me. I hope you enjoy uh, National Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you, uh, and do listen, when the, this cloud of COVID lifts, uh, make an effort to come and visit us here in Jasper National Park. Until then, uh, enjoy your day. Kinanaskomatin, Marcy.
Well, that concludes our amazing trip across Alberta, featuring some of our wonderful members. ITA would like to wish everybody a celebratory and a very safe National Indigenous Peoples Day. And thank you to all of our members who were able to provide us with some videos showcasing a little bit of culture. Take care, everybody.